。大家晚上好，欢迎来到我们今天晚上的得力系列。今天我们很荣幸的有新生命的总主任牧师叶超群来为我们分享，家庭成为属灵中心，让我们带着渴慕的心，一起的来领受，并且呢，愿意回应神的呼召，活出神的心意。现在，让我们一起敬拜赞美我们的神。Greeting you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not able to meet together physically, but thank God for this technology, and we are able to at least connect one with another. This is an important time; it's an unprecedented time, but it is a time whereby I believe that the Lord is putting an urgency in my own heart regarding you. And of course, I know that this time, with all the social distancing and so on, we do miss one another. And、uh, I just trust that. This will be at least some kind of compensation, whereby we can at least get together, despite all the circumstances we are in. Today, I'm going to have a message that I believe God has placed in my heart for you, and it's an important message. It's a message as a continuation on the theme、uh, of heaven in your home, with an emphasis on the family as a spiritual hub, but particularly. Regarding understanding the times, 
and the title therefore is Family as a Spiritual Hub, Understanding the Times. In your second slide, I'd like you to understand that uh, God wants us to know and understand the times so that we can be the wiser in a time when things can be totally unexpected, things are uncertain and many people could be affected negatively and I thank God, I think many of us in our churches are still uh, blessed and covered and protected and provided for in many ways and uh, this is despite maybe others in the world that are actually struggling and maybe some are really suffering and uh, when these things happen like this understanding the times help us to elevate anxiety so being wiser and we know what's going on helps us and not being given to anxiety or depression is a great benefit for us and we know that God is consciously telling us in the Bible how he is always concerned about times and seasons and he is the one who created the Sun the moon and the stars and that the world had relied on these elements these planets to to help us to, to, to guide us in our calendar for example we celebrate festivals according to the moons we predict uh, uh, what's coming according to the weather like the times of the uh, Israel during the time of Jesus they actually look at the weather and then they figure out okay is it a planting time a sowing time or uh, or, or what else they must they must do uh, with that particular season and uh, the stars people look to the stars to navigate themselves uh, from place to place so and then the Bible talks about the, the times about uh, uh, the Babylonian captivity 70 years and, uh, and and also about maybe the time of great tribulation how many years and how often the Bible you read the book of Revelation talk about 1260 days three and a half years God is on this matter of time and seasons so if God is on it we better be part of it and be aware of it and um, the Bible talks in talks about sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 and the Bible described the sons of Issachar as people who know the times and the season they discern the times and the seasons and they had helped the Israelites during their time to navigate through the course of life during uh, that particular part of history the benefit of knowing times and season is so that we can prepare ourselves for what's coming up next and this is important well the pandemic came all of a sudden at least to us anyway um, and some people are already saying that maybe this is the time when Jesus is coming again uh, some months ago at the beginning of the year when uh, when that was going around I was telling some people that maybe not yet if at all it if, if at all this is end times this could be the beginning of it but we should learn and discern and be awakened to the fact that things are happening and they are not normal and they could be indicative of what the Bible talks about regarding end times at all sometimes referred to as the last days and some people say well they have been talking about it since the book of Acts and Jesus came talk about the end times and the last days and uh, well that, and that's 2,000 years ago my my understanding is we shouldn't be hardened to the fact that it might have already been 2,000 years and they've started to talk about it in the book of Hebrews in the book of Peter in the uh, Gospels of Matthew Mark Luke and John uh, but don't be hardened to it but recognize that if 2,000 years was the last days now 2020 could be even closer to the day and there are things that are happening already that maybe are signals that we must take notice of so I'd like you to understand that during this time 
well, we are going through these things, and I mentioned a little bit that we should be awakened to, to what's going on. There are five things that I'd like us to be awakened to. And the first one is in understanding the time, let us do uh, understand this, that this must be a time of preparation for us. This is the first thing, okay? The first thing is we must be into the time of preparation for the second coming, even though we don't know when. Um, but we do know though, many things are happening around the world. Because of the pandemic, many things could be set in place. Greater central control. This health crisis is not only affecting health, it's affecting economics. And uh, it is also a time whereby uh, the normal way of buying things is changed because of the fear of touching things due to the uh, fear of the spread of the virus. Uh, therefore, cashless society is in place more than ever. The numbering system, the ID system, the tracking, tracking of individuals, all these things are in place. Technology, artificial intelligence are in place. So don't forget that we are in a different day compared to 2,000 years ago, even though they have talked about the last days 2,000 years earlier. And so uh, just realize that we are in a time when things are actually more in place for what we could look at or notice in the book of Revelation or in the Gospels that had been describing regarding the last days. The ID 2020, what is it? Um, and uh, what's happening with the chaos that are happening around the world today? There are countries and nations in chaos, mass de demonstrations that are going on in Belarus, in, in uh, certain uh, countries like Hong Kong and other places and socialism coming through and controlling and so on. Well, you never know what is coming up next, but in some ways we should know a little bit. And that's the reason why I'm talking to you today. Like you, I would like everything to return to normal, but they tell us that maybe it's not going to be and we have to accept the idea of a new normal. And I tried to, 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 to figure that out and, dis and address it as, uh, a couple of months ago regarding a new normal. Um, but what if things really aren't going to go back to the way it was and they're not going to be the same again? If it is so, then all the more, we should be preparing ourselves, at least spiritually. Well, in this time of preparation, my encouragement to you in New Life Churches, you have to spiritually prepare yourself at least with a greater reading of the Bible, the Word of God. And you just want to understand the times, at least read the, book, the Word of God regarding end times. Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, Book of Revelation, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and so on, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, all these books, many epistles, the, the, the Gospels, and, and particularly the book of Revelation, they have reference to the last days, the end times. We must be familiarized with these things. And maybe some of us are a little bit concerned about the book of Revelation because uh, in some ways, some people look at it and it, it's very frightening. It's frightening if you only know a little bit, but read through it. Anyhow, you will be blessed. The Bible, actually, the book itself promises you that if you read through the book of Revelation, you will be blessed. Why? Because it is giving you an idea, a glimpse of what is to come. And the world is going to come with certain things, but the Bible already predicted it. And we are now having insider knowledge of it. And that is very important. But in this time of preparation, another important thing that I really want to bring it to your attention is the time of deeper understanding of the gospel of the kingdom. You know, it's a grace of God that God is alerting different 
places and different people, including myself, about the gospel of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And it is about more than what we used to know regarding the gospel and the church. It has given me a greater understanding of what the church really exists for, what we as individuals exist for, including we the families are existing for. Really, understanding the gospel of the kingdom is very, very vital. We have thought that the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of salvation so that people are saved and then they can go to to heaven. We thought that the gospel is about preaching uh, to people so that they can turn to Jesus and head towards heaven. But read the Bible again. As much as what the Lord has showed me is it is not about going to heaven, but more of heaven coming to earth to us and through us in this time on earth. Now that's a great difference. Why is the gospel of the kingdom a good news? We've got to have a deeper understanding of this as part of our preparation because it is drawing us to the attention, uh, drawing to our attention on the king of the kingdom and the realm of his reign, which is his kingdom. And so that when things come upon this earth and the kingdoms of this earth and the nations, we are in a higher realm. We are in the kingdom of God. And God is our king. And if the prince of this world is up to something, our king who is above everyone else, and the name of Jesus is above every other name, we are in a much better place than being just subjected to the affairs of this world. So we must understand greater and deeper the kingdom of God. And this is part of the preparation. Go and listen to some of my things that I've already recorded. Ask for it and you'll get them from Lying. And uh, it will be important for us to find greater realities, understand greater realities of the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven on earth, the difference between kingdom and the church, so that we, we will have a time of preparation that will give us faith. The key factor of preparation is to prepare your faith and your faith is built according to reading the Bible and understanding the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, the the second thing about uh, understanding the time is a time of measurement. Measure our standing in relation to Jesus Christ. And this is important. Over the years, we have noticed that uh, God is always wanting to 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 bring us into an understanding that we are to walk closely with Him and we are to be changed from glory to glory to be like Jesus Christ. We We know these things in the head, but what is important for us to know is that when really crisis hit this this earth, we are the God's people are in a place to be protected by Him. And we have noticed that He measures people. You read the book, uh, the, the, the Old Testament prophets, and you know that, you know, like the book of Amos, he measures people. And um, back further in the book of Genesis, in the time of Noah, when God destroyed the whole earth in Genesis chapter 6, what did he do? He looked for people who, was, who were righteous in his eyes so that they can be brought into an ark, the ship that he had prepared through Noah. And then with that ship and with the, with the people in it and those that are brought in together with Noah and his family, they are protected and are kept so that they can be used by the Lord for the next phase of rehabilitating the earth. Well, we have to make sure that we measure ourselves in relation to Jesus Christ so that we are also able to enter into his ship and our ship will be so much like his ship so that not only we enter into his ship but jesus enters into our ship because it's the same boat okay and of course we know that in the bible they talk about how when you have jesus in your boat even sunday school sing the songs that christ is in your uh, in your boat you will you will be uh, able to ride through your storm and um we got to measure ourselves so that we fit into this 
boat into the ship of Jesus Christ. Well, what do we measure? Measure our physical life, our bodily life, and how this bodily life is just what are, what, uh, what, what are we on about? Are we just only caring for it in terms of all the different things that we do and we like to do and so on? We Malaysians, we like to eat, we look after, we go cari makan all the time and uh, we take care of our meals very well. But this, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace and joy <laughs> in the Holy Spirit. And so therefore, we've got to be, be, be conscious of that our life is not just only uh, churning round and round uh, regarding our bodily things, but take care of the soul, measure our soul, measure our emotions so that we don't fall prey to the pressures of this life and the stress of life that is attacking the soul and the wellness of our emotions. Emotional health is absolutely important, but more than anything, measure our spiritual standing with the Lord Jesus Christ. And where, how, where does it start? In our heart. The spiritual understanding is not some mystical thing. It's about our heart with the Lord. The Lord in us, in our heart, and we having a heart for the Lord. We like God to have us in His heart, but we need to have God in our heart too, so that we will ensure that we will fit into the door, into the ship that Jesus Christ has prepared for us. And in the times of storm, come what may, in God's ark, we can be saved. However, that doesn't mean that nobody will die. We will all die one day. Some people die at a martyr's death. Others die in all kinds of other means. But at least when we guard our heart, and the Bible says the heart from it is other issues of life, we at least will be able to attend to God's things in this life. And at least our hearts are not filled with negatives so that we can live in, with faith in our heart with positives. And that's the point I mentioned just now. Time of preparation is about faith. Now, time of measurement, same. It is still about our faith, okay? And it is about exchanging negatives with positives and so that we have a renewed mind of the gospel as a good news that can bring about a preparation to face the days ahead in such a manner with Christ, our measurement, our yardstick, okay? You know, in the the Bible talks about in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that we are in difficult times. That's NLT. In King James, he says we are in uh, perishable times. In NIV, we are in times of trouble. Not good words, but very real words. And in some ways, this is the time whereby many are f facing all these things, that in difficulties or challenges. Call it any way. The times are probably going to be more than what we have been used to, maybe harder than what has we have been used to. But yet, at the same time, we got to understand that uh, all these things are shaking the, the 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 system. So, in Hebrews chapter twelve, for example, the Bible says, "Anything that can be shaken will be shaken." There will be a shaking in the nations. There will be a shaking of systems, including maybe the church system is being shaken. We can't get into the churches today. Today, even if you get in, if you're above 70, you stay home. You're under 12, you stay home. And some people are complaining about it. I read about them in the Facebook. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't matter. At least maybe we have a Zoom time. All right. But you see, the point is, we must understand that God is in this thing and using them to shake and maybe to refine, refine God's people, refine the church. And, uh, but you know what? Hebrews chapter 12, like I said, at the end there, the Bible says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but the kingdom of God shall not be shaken. Hallelujah. And you know what? Not only that, there will be in the last days, like Haggai chapter 2, verse 7 and 9, that 
there will be a coming of the glory of God in the last days too. When the days are getting dimmer and dimmer, the glory of God is going to shine brighter and brighter. How does this happen? Read Isaiah chapter 60. Later on, I'm going to bring, back, bring you back to it. And then you will be able to appreciate that your life is meant to shine God's glory. Hallelujah. It's about the light of God. It's about the illuminating of God, illuminating of the presence of God in your life. It's about seeing that God is good and God is powerful and God is glorious even in the times of darkness. But there's one thing that you and I need to do. Acts chapter 2, verse seven and, uh, 17 and 18, he says that in these last days, there will be young men see visions, old men dreams, but all men and women will prophesy. It is a prophetic spirit, a prophetic anointing uh, uh, that will uh, be empowering people to have insights. The prophetic thing is not something so mysterious. It is just a, a sense of revelation. It's a sense of God's illuminating something. It's a sense of seeing things in the perspective of the heavenlies and God's realm. It is about being able to discern, having insights into God's realm and what God is doing. And that's being prophetic. Rather, this is not just only coming and say to some people, thus saith the Lord. Not that. It is about prophetic insight, spiritual insight into what is going on that will help you to be wiser and elevate your anxiety. And this is not somebody's gift. It's not only for certain people. It's for all. God wants to pour out His Spirit upon all people. And He says, young men will see this, old men will do that. And, 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 and you know what? You and I, all men and women will be able to prophesy. And I'd like you to yearn for this because if I don't tell you this, that you have to see this scripture, you won't, you won't measure up to it. So in the time of measurement, look for things that will help you to grow deeper and stronger into these things. Now, the next, the next thing, the third thing to be alerted to in this time of Understand, in this end, understanding of time is that it's time to be to be the captain of your ship. And I told you that we are in the boat with Jesus. Jesus in our boat, and I like our boats to be the same. Okay, uh, with Jesus Christ. But God is telling us this: that boats and ships go through storms in the oceans and in the waters of the sea. And in Psalm 34, verse 19. It talks about many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all. So, you want to just be raptured and taken away before everything happens? I, I doubt it. The pandemic is already here and people are already suffering whether Christian or non-Christian. So, are you taken away, already, taken away already? You are still around, unless I missed it. Okay. <laughs> um, but you know what? I think it's better to prepare for a, a time of ch uh, challenges and afflictions and trouble. And if the Lord takes us just like that, before all more comes, wonderful. If not, we are prepared and we will go through. But there will be a time when the Lord is going to pour out His wrath upon the devil and upon all the whatever that is happening in this world that is unpleasing to Him. Maybe by that time, the Lord is going to bring us to be, protect us and elevate us uh, and, and lift us up from all these things before he does that anyway that's all part of the book of revelations and and we will have to you, you can read this for yourself uh, in terms of revelations chapter 13 and, and onwards all right um, but what I want to inform you and encourage you to think is like this you are the captain of your ship Jesus is the chief captain of all but he has delegates and you and I are his delegates and we are stewards who are entrusted to look after and to, to be captain of our ships. The first ship that you are entrusted to look after is your family. And then some of you who are cell leaders, it's a small group. Those of you who are pastors, it's your church. And you are to make sure that you are informed. You are able to navigate your ship to the place whereby it is 
able to fulfill its purpose and arrive in its destination. And so it's important for us to be people that understand that we do have some responsibilities and we do have roles to play. And it's not just about somebody else trying to play it for us. You have to play your role because your family is your baby. Okay, and you have to learn how to be able to navigate it. And if you're the only Christian in your home, maybe you are the spiritual captain of your family, of your ship. And you have to go back and figure out, Lord, how do I prepare myself in the experience of the gospel, of the kingdom, so that I can bring others in my family into the the gospel and enter into the kingdom. And so it's important for us to understand these things and prepare yourself to allow God to be in control. And then when you and God are in control, the devil has no control. You must not let the devil have the last say regarding your life. No matter how difficult it is, God and you have the last say because God works with you and you work with God. It is time with family that will help us to go through all these things. We must work with our family. We must work in the family, whatever that we are preparing now. And so we're talking about the, the, the different alerts, uh, time of preparation, time of measurement, time of being uh, the, the, the captain of the uh, ship. These things are important, but the important thing is time. Make time with your family to do these things. Read the Bible together and uh, pray together and learn how to hear God together. I'm talk I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the fourth alert is time to be deeper in Jesus. Well, in some ways, talking about being deeper in the kingdom gospel is already part of it. And uh, But more than that, we're talking about deeper in Jesus. It's in like scripture, like John chapter 15, verse 4, remain in me and I'll remain in you. You remain in Jesus is one thing. If you've got to make sure that our lives are in such a way whereby Jesus is able to remain in us. Okay. John chapter 14, verse 17 says, you've got to know the Holy Spirit. All right. And he dwells in you. We may have a head knowledge of having the Holy Spirit. We might even be speaking in tongues once in a little while. But having the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and living and walking and moving in the Holy Spirit, maybe it's a different matter for some of us. And then the Word of God that, that will stay, everything will pass away, but the Word of God will not pass away. So if we want to be stable, we need the Word of God and we need to actually have it in us. Memorize some of the scriptures, memorize some of the word, word that the Lord has been talking to you and, and and keep them in your heart. Meditate upon them. You know, walking with deeper in with Jesus is not only just walking with G Jesus and Holy Spirit and Word, but it's also walking with a sense of destiny. And you know what? Paul had a sense of destiny. In Acts chapter 28, he knew that part of his destiny is to go to Rome. And to go to Rome, there may be a shipwreck. He will still live, and the people along with him will live also. And he told them so. We need to rethink and reposition ourselves in relation to this world. Okay. And the last alert is about understanding our time. It's time to be heavenly minded. You know what? This particular year, I proclaim ourselves to be a time of heaven in your home. The idea of the kingdom of heaven on earth is not just going to heaven when we pass away from this earth. It is about heaven overlapping on earth, even on to, to earth in our lives, in our world. Learning how to grow and have heaven over, overlapping our earth, our earthly life, is something that we have to learn. When I preach these things, people think that it's a new revelation. It's not. It is something that God wants us to have all the time. And it is about God wanting us to experience heavenlies as well as down here. So Revelation chapter 1, God told uh, John, come up here. What is it? John was still alive. And he was to go up to experience God in his realm. And what is it for? So that we can pray. Jeremiah 33.3 3. Our prayer will take a different form. 
and then we are hid in Christ, Colossians 3.3, 3. and Isaiah 60, Arise and shine the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is upon you. What for? So that the, in times of darkness, the light shines brighter. And what happens is when the light shines brighter, people will come to you to seek your God. And this is how heavenly-minded Christians will live in these end times. Praise God. I'm going to pray right now and ask the Lord to help us because... Well, I've concluded this particular message with the five alerts in understanding the time, the time of preparation, the time of measurement, the time of being the captain of the ship, the time of uh, deeper in Christ, and the time of being heavenly minded. With these five things, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that, Father, you will reorientate our thinking and reposition our mind so that, Lord, we will have a conviction of the Word and the Spirit and have our hearts to discern your times and your seasons. And I pray, Father, if, you have, if there's anyone who, who doesn't know you, Jesus, speak to us all and draw us to yourself so that we live in your kingdom in Jesus' name. God bless you and see you again one day. Amen.